Podcasting from somewhere in the San Francisco Bay Area, the birthplace of Bruce Lee, the iPhone, and the Bendy Straw. This is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. No was a dream, a million miles away. There was fire in Amazon.com. You know, I won't be surprised if more and more stuff that I shop for, buy, and get shipped to my home comes from Amazon. It's just a reality, right? And if this is your reality, go to ruelsrunning.com, click through to the Amazon banner to get to Amazon. Why am I asking you to do so? Well, it is a no-cost-to-you way, if you like listening to Ruel's Running Podcast, it is a way that you can help the show out without spending more than you've already spent while shopping at the good folks at Amazon.com. So help us out. Go to RuelsRunning.com, click through to the Amazon.com site, and shop, connect, and enjoy. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Ruel, Ruel Aberdeen, your friendly neighborhood podcaster. Today on this podcast we are going to just get an update um, and uh, talk about some stuff. God, if you are a new listener, welcome, welcome, welcome. Not a whole lot here, just me um, being me. And uh, if you are a return listener, thanks for coming back to the show. Um, I'm uh, been pretty busy, and uh, not to say that none of you all are, because I'm sure we're all busy trying to make it happen. We're running around, sometimes on autopilot, sometimes with a uh, with a. Uh, Intent and uh, planning ah, never gets uh, never gets boring. It does get tiring, and it, it does uh, sometimes get really exciting. Um, so, <clears throat> lots gone on, lots gone on, and um, let me try and minimize some of that vibration, the vibrations happening. There you go. I am in a uh, rental car. I'll start off with that. <laughs> Yay, rental car. Yeah, we got a uh, we have a vehicle uh, under repair at the moment. Yeah, nothing worse than getting a phone call from the spouse saying that I got into an accident. Scary as you know, as scary as can be because now I can only imagine what it was like when when I was a teenager making those phone calls to my parents to let them know that I was in an accident. But it's one of those, I got into an accident, but I'm okay. <sighs> Big sigh of relief. Because nothing else matters, right? Everything else can be fixed or repaired. Yeah, I, uh, God... One morning, my wife got up like we like she usually does. Then I got up like I usually do. We do the usual what we do's, you know, get ready for work, get get the kids ready for school, prepare meals, all that good stuff. And uh, my wife leaves for work. I'm, uh, you know, while she's off for work, I'm uh, wrapping up, uh, you know, getting kids. ready to go for school and all that good stuff and it was never a dull morning and uh, get that call you know did you get my text my wife says nope didn't get it because I don't always have my phone on me and sometimes if I do have it on me I just can't hear it because the thing's on vibrate or it's on uh, I'm wearing a 
some loose clothes and I can't feel a thing vibrate. <clears throat> so that's a problem. Anyway, she's like, I got to an accident. Somebody rear-ended me. And, uh, like, okay. Well, um, is it drivable? You're okay, but is it drivable? Do you need someone to pick you up? Do you need, do I need to call a roadside? Or do you need to call a roadside? And, uh, as far as you can tell, it's, it's drivable. And most of the damage happened to the other party who, you know, bump, smashed into her from behind. And uh, I'm like, okay. <clears throat> you know, she's never been in that type of accident before. And, she, you know, she can't make it. She's not a mechanic either, so she can't assess. And the best I can do over the phone is, like, can you drive it? Well, at this point, it depends on how you feel. And, you know, if the damage it doesn't looks more surface than anything, then... Sounds like it's drivable. So we, we, we go with that. Go ahead and, you know, just head over to the office. Everything seems just surface level damage. And uh, then when you get the chance, as soon as you can, call the insurance company and, uh, you know, start the claim, start the process. So I get another call um, at some point, And she says, my wife says that, you know, she can hear some weird noises coming from the vehicle. I'm like, okay, just come right back, swap vehicles. Um, I'll take the kids to where they need to go. Then I'll rendezvous with you and uh, we'll uh, swap vehicles. And uh, so we went, we went with that plan. And uh, while I'm driving off the kids, she managed to get to the rendezvous point and start the process of talking to the insurance company managed to get um, the address of a place who can do the uh, estimate a place that I'm familiar with if you could rec- if you recall a few episodes back I got smashed on the side by an uber driver so so uh, I was familiar with this auto body shop that could do the estimate and uh, so when I finally got meeting with her we just drove together in the the vehicle that got into the accident over for the estimate just to get start things moving quicker and we get there and um, the guy that's supposed to do the estimate isn't there and they, they ordinarily need us to come back to make that appointment so like okay we'll roll with that but one of the staff guys there, I think he's like the owner or the manager, he says he, he would just take pictures anyways and start the ball rolling so that the uh, you know, they can start doing some preliminary um, estimates and list of items that need to be ordered, you know, eventually, you know, should the repair be done there. So I walked the guy over with his cam, you know, he has his camera, I take him to the vehicle and he's taking pictures. And uh, he's under the vehicle taking more pictures. And I don't know if he would have done that had I not pointed out that the uh, the muffler had been, you know, had been hit and it got pushed in a bit because it's not hanging on the little rubberized sort of loop that keeps the the muffler properly suspended towards the rear bumper. So then that gets him looking at it and gets him under the vehicle. And right away he says, yeah, you're not going to be able to drive this. You need to get a rental car. Because from the muffler on in where it, the pipe kind of curves into that S of some sort, it, uh, there's a crimping of the tailpipe. And folks who are familiar with cars and engines and exhaust know that... Uh, the, the reason why it's an exhaust is because it needs to <laughs> not only to let the stinky air out but um, let pressure out and with the crimping of the pipe there is a reduced capacity of uh, you know ability of that pressure to release so the risk is what was described to me as back pressure into the engine damaging the engine and uh, that wouldn't that wouldn't have been covered by the insurance the sh- that would have been covered by the insurance. So, so there we were. What ended up just being a estimate, and then go on with the rest of our day, ended up being um, let's wait for the uh, 
Hertz Rena guy to pick us up and uh, arrange us a, uh, a rental vehicle. So that happened. Spent more, more of that morning. We got picked up in a vehicle that ended up being the vehicle that we were renting. And what's funny, too, is because the guy that picked us up was this older Filipino man who I'm pretty sure <laughs> is a distant relative of my wife's, uh, you know, based on name and and where his family's from and where my, my wife's family's from. Mm-hmm. So that was a fun, interesting drive to the rental car office. Yeah, so, you know, sitting in this rental car and it's kind of neat. Plugged the phone in and the thing recognizes my phone as a, an iPhone and then it proceeds to play the music that's part of my phone either in the music app or on the uh, whatever had been used the, late, the, the, the most recent as far as playing music. You know, it could be the Amazon music app. Ah. So, you know, t- the vehicle is uh, mostly done. You know, a lot of time has passed. You know, about a week has passed since the accident. And uh, actually went over to pick it up. Um... A few days ago, on a Friday, and uh, that was it. that was interesting. It was sort of like okay, the uh, the other party uh, admitted to uh, being at fault, admitted liability, so everything's covered. We don't have to pay our pay out our deductible to get the vehicle once it's repaired. Everything's taken care of. The rental car as well, and uh, so I get a call like okay. Um, it's ready, it's got, it's, the paint's been done, you know, it, it needs to be detailed, but we noticed that the back latch has an issue, so a part's been ordered, and it just needs to be installed, so the vehicle should be ready um, by the afternoon of that day. And then, so, cool. Make plans for coming there in the afternoon. Get another call midday. Like, yeah, don't make any plans to be here yet. We found, we, we replaced the part, but then there's still an issue. We suspect it's the electronics that control the locking and release on a remote level for the, uh, for the back hatch of the vehicle. So the part has been ordered and it should, be, it, should be, it should arrive. We just need to replace it and then we should be good. But don't go anywhere until I let you know. So they do that additional repair and... It worked. Yay! So basically what that means is the the keyless entry or the remote, you know, can can cause the, the back hatch to unlock if we need to. Right. Like all the other locks in the in the vehicle, you can unlock and lock the vehicle. So um eventually get my way to towards the the, the body shop, get another call. <laughs> and the gal on the phone was like, do you have a, uh, looks like you have a third party security system. Do you have like a different remote to control it? You know, and, you know, it's a Toyota 4Runner. And when we bought it new years ago, um, that was the alarm system that was being sold along with the vehicle if we wanted wanted the the system so they installed it at the dealer when they sold us the vehicle so I don't it's just part of the deal to them it's it's third party and it technically is a third party but it it came installed by the dealer sold along with everything so then uh, right away I'm thinking okay I need to turn around get back to the house and get all of the original documentation surrounding that security system because it might come in handy for whatever the issue is. I got a call back from the uh, the mechanic or whoever, someone who was, wasn't the receptionist, to go, kind of go over what the challenges were. And I told them, well, you know, right when I was asked if there was an, like an original remote system or whatever, 
I went ahead, headed back home to get all the information I could. And, uh, cool. So, got over there, and the problem is, although, even though the, the remote can lock and unlock the vehicle, the vehicle won't start. And it did, it, it didn't have a problem doing that. It didn't have a problem starting uh, when, when I brought the vehicle in. It didn't have a problem starting before they made that electronic, that last repair. So their suspicion is that they tripped something in the security system that killed the, uh, the ability to turn on the engine. I contacted the security alarm company and they said, well, if the thing is armed and the uh, and then that happens, you know, it gets the alarm gets triggered, then it'll shut down the ability to turn on the engine. Um, and there's an indicator that tells you that it's armed and been triggered. But if it isn't, then it's got to be something else that's causing the engine to not start. So, when I got there, you know, I looked at the manual that I provided to see if I could just go off of that assumption that it was, it needs a manual override, do a certain sequence of things with the key ignition and the buttons to uh, get things disarmed and get things going, but no luck. And that was a Friday afternoon, 10 minutes before they were closing, nothing else so the vehicle is just about ready to to come home but except for the fact that it won't start for me to take home so the thing had to be pushed into uh, the garage and uh, things need to be figured out figured out it's Monday today and uh, when I drove past <clears throat> to take my daughter to preschool I could see that the vehicle was being worked on the back hatch was open, so it leads me to assume that they are undoing some of the last repair. If there's a defect, I'm, I'm imagining this, and they can tell me. I'm imagining perhaps there was a, a problem in the steps of how they reinstalled that electronic replacement that caused you know this sort of engine shutdown. Or there's enough defect in the part that allows the locking and unlocking of the back hatch, but the defect is such that it, it's enough to hinder the engine from starting. I don't know. But <laughs> you guys are like, uh, gosh, well, I'm new to your podcast, and all I'm hearing about is your vehicle woes. That's right. Because if my vehicle isn't running then I'm not running and that is actually in line with this podcast <laughs> so yeah hopefully today hopefully today uh, can get something good and going so for the folks who are pissed off because I'm not talking about running guess what I went for a run today so today is one of those unusual days where I had to call in to the op not call in but notify the office that um, I have something else going on. Um, on a, not only did we not get the vehicle, but when we got home, the dryer, our clothes, our laundry dryer, uh, decided to just die on us. And it's uh, it's about 11 years old. And I saved it once. I've done a repair on it, manually figured out what boards were defective, and ordered the parts and. The de swap, but this was the 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 wear and tear on the on the the dryer is is more than I am capable of doing of re- repairing. So rather than spend most of the money that would have been put in a new in a new one, um, trying to replace it, I mean trying to repair it myself, just got it hauled away and got a, a new one brought in. And that delivery window was smack dab in the middle of this Monday, so I can get that. Uh, going so I'm a uh, I'm sort of I'm 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 uh, having lunch and talking to you guys because I haven't spoken to you guys in a while and hopefully 
you know, just wanted to say that. Hopefully, uh, I'll get a call this afternoon to say, come and return that rental vehicle so that you can get your truck back. Um, you know, everything's sort of, uh, in some sort of disarray. <laughs> yeah. So, while I'm in limbo and before things kind of got hectic, I went for a short run. A r- must have been just a couple miles, but it was a nice short run that got me out where I have not been able to be in a while. And the sun is out, so, you know, getting my, getting my uh, sun exposure and getting grimy and stinky. And it uh, feels good. It feels good to be able to do that. And uh, wanted to start off the week good by doing that despite all the other stuff that's going on and uh we'll see how the rest of the week takes i mean goes where the rest of the week takes me hopefully i can go along that pattern make better choices with what i eat and better choices with what with how i eat make better choices with how i spend my my time to uh maximize my uh my run time um an update on what what i plan to be doing you know As far as racing, you know, Ruel's not a big racer. I did one race uh, a few months back, and I'd love to do it again. I did talk about wanting to get into an event, which I thought was in June, but it's actually at the end of May, towards the back end of May, and that's just too soon for me to jump in and do anything. Not to mention, I'm not too happy about the registration fees, the registration cost for that particular one, so maybe another year. Um... There is another 50K um, north of here that uh, is in June this time. And uh, the registration isn't, is much better. And uh, if I can pull that off, I will uh, let you guys know. Pulling that off is more like this. I sign up. I get the money. I register. Yay. I start running more regularly. Get Make myself feel... Um, warm and fuzzy about having a good level of uh, fitness to uh, pull myself out there again and uh, at the same time having to schedule my mom who lives with us uh, to be elsewhere because um, I don't want her hanging around the house while I'm spending most of the day um, on a trail and why does that matter how does my how does well, how does my outdoor activity throughout the day How is that impacted by my mom being indoors in my house? Um, uh, The uh, the truth is, um, (laughs) um, let's just say, (laughs) um, when I'm leaving my my family alone uh, while I do some uh, day-long event on a trail, um, I want them to, to just enjoy the house by themselves uh just the wife and kids i'll put it that way so yeah i gotta whenever i plan these things now i have to make sure that i can coordinate my mom being elsewhere yeah peace of mind and uh that's called the skyline 50k that event yeah so if uh if i uh if i make the effort um i'll 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 get in if I don't make the effort, then I'm a wiener, and uh, I won't have uh, anything to talk about as far as real running. <laughs> as far as real running, speaking of real running, did you guys catch the uh, sub two hour marathon attempt this past weekend? Amazing, right? So, I guess the world's record is sh- uh, two hours and some change. No one's gone sub two before, uh, at least been recorded. So, you know, an effort has been made to to stage not a world record attempt, but to stage the conditions such that uh, a set of runners can attempt to break the two hour barrier. And it's a barrier right now. It's a mental barrier. Um, so, bottom line is, you know, three participants. A whole bunch of pacers, a lot of planning on a racetrack, I think somewhere in Italy, try to make the conditions uh, as optimal as possible, special shoes for the runners, all that, all that stuff, a lot of exposure. And uh, two of the three um, 
fall, fell back and it was left to one guy and I don't I can't pronounce his name I can't even remember how it's how, how it's spelled you, you you'll have to look it up and uh, yeah he went two hours I don't know something like 20 something seconds you know under a minute you know under 30 seconds shy of being sub two and that was faster than the world record but it doesn't count as a world record because because of all of the special treatment that had happened with pacers coming in and out but what it did do in the running world is at least the marathon running you know and which which includes olympic and world competition it and you know it just it just breaks that barrier of what's possible you know um you know there's predictions that this individual this runner um now, now that he's proven to himself how he's been able to smash the world record time during this experiment he can go out in competition and he can just really kill it and you never know probably go under two hours that's just you know once you've once people see what's possible where they previously didn't think possible holy moly incredible things happen so yeah that's real running for you it was interesting to watch because it was on live on on uh, on facebook streaming and i'm sure other places a lot of attention from the running community you know on it it's just amazing and the guy the guy you could see him towards the, the, the tail end you know he would wince every now and then sometimes his wincing looked like he was smiling so you know and uh as he got towards that final stretch you know his pacers would peel off and they would just stand there and watch him go and they could see the clock and and uh, just watch the remaining seconds to see what unfolded it ended up being what it ended up and you know for the rest of the mere mortals who would run something like that you know you'd get to the finish line and you'd you know be exhausted sure he was exhausted but he still looked like he could you know he's his his posture his it was such that you know he wasn't like dying you know he was still standing he was walking he was giving hugs but uh you know one of the uh the uh commentators you know said okay he's he's running towards the finish at that point you know that the running is to me it's spectacular running but then from a elite marathon level you, you know that's that's just you just really hanging on um meaning to say he can go faster except he's at a stage of the event where he's not as fast as he could be, be you know so i know i don't know you know for for the trained eye you're thinking like man you know he just doesn't have any more to go any faster. Meanwhile, I'm like, he's still on fire. Holy cow! Look how fast he's going. His like, his exhausted effort is my, is my fresh effort, or, or not even my fresh effort. I can't go as fast as any of these guys, you know, can sneeze, you know, a, a little, a little jog. You know, I'm, I'm not that talented, but it was incredible. So, I'm sure you can catch. You know the recorded versions you know online if you're interested look look out for it it was a uh, Nike sponsored it Nike provided the special shoes so certainly Nike's gonna be selling a lot more shoes like they all like they usually do but you know they they set, they help set the stage so that this type of experiment this sort of athletic feat can be uh, uh, tried out it's pretty cool pretty cool history in the making for sure or history um awesome now what did i cover i covered a i covered a broken car i covered a broken dryer and i covered some spectacular running um do 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 
Ah, so I guess I want to talk about um, how I've not made the best choices with what I ate, and I've definitely not been as consistent with my running. And I talk about it here, and you know, trying to start off the week on the right foot by getting a run, and even though it's only a couple miles, you know, I'm I I want to get some sort of momentum going even though I don't have a race a race signed up for or a long solo run planned for I want to get some good momentum going because I don't feel like myself right I'm I've put on some weight right I uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm struggling I really am and so I'm really looking forward to um, you know challenging myself to eat as clean as possible, be as consistent as possible there at mealtime as well as, you know, on the run and, uh, you know, see if I could prove that the combination of an SNG and maybe even with the help of some uh, fasting, right, whether or not I could kind of utilize those two things and see how fast or see how quick I could spring back get to uh, a fitness and a weight that I'm, I want to I just, and uh, I just need to do something about it and I also want to try some other things to keep me motivated I spent one long evening caught up on YouTube you know what that's like you just get sucked into video after video after video. And no, it wasn't about diet and and running. It was it's it always has to do with martial arts. <laughs> My other passion. And uh, you know, and it got I was watching videos of some bag work by uh, uh you know by uh, Joe Rogan. He had a, and I didn't just Google Joe Rogan. I was watching, um, I was watching some classic um, kickboxing, some his, some history in the making type matches by uh, the Ruf, by Rufus uh, Duke or Rick or both. You know the Rufus brothers. You know what they meant, what it meant by to mix martial arts, American kickboxing at the time, and so I was watching some classic fights of. An American and a Thai going at it and how the Thai guy just demolished, you know, one of these Americans and how that American, I, forget, I don't know if it was Duke or Rick Rufus, um, basically took that, took that and eventually uh, adjusted his, his perception and his training, went to Thailand, went for training and improved himself and then I was watching a much older fight where he was much older and seeing the difference of when he was younger and had his one style of fighting in, in, the, in the ring versus when he was older and had changed his whole game and it was it was inspiring you know and it wanted me to go back out there and do something you know something you know with myself um, I don't have a bag anymore. I, I still have a lot of pads, and you know, I don't, I don't have a gym to go to, to and nor do I have the time, and I don't, nor do I have the money to, to, uh, to get myself in a gym to do this type of stuff. Not right now. I mean, I'm holding on to a lot of my equipment because I want to hopefully share them with my with my kids, and you know, do home training sessions with the kids. You know, learn some boxing, learn some kick, kickboxing, learn some, you know, other self-defense, and learn some, you know, weapons training and other stuff like that. Good. And, uh, anyways, so, that led me, so from the roof, the, 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 sort of the, the pattern was I was looking at kickboxing, Muay Thai, kickboxing, Rufus Brothers, Rufus to Joe Rogan. There was a connection there, and now next thing you know, I'm watching... Joe Rogan at his home gym uh, demonstrating some kicks to I think one of the Rufus brothers on who was holding the camera and I was like damn man 
I miss that. I miss the sound of that bag getting smacked. I miss that. Um, you know, and and to be quite honest, you know, I'm feeling because I don't feel like I'm, you know, like <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something. I also feel like not only am I not out, of, not in shape, and I'm kind of loose with my diet, but I feel like things that hurt. There, I feel things hurting now that didn't used to hurt for a long time. So I feel I'm feeling worn out and old, <laughs> right? Things that were injuries just a few months ago that were unnoticed. Now there's pain in those areas that, like, oh, I remember what happened there. But man, it's it's really limiting my the ability to do stuff. You know, I uh, last winter I was trying to remove and I I think I talked about it before I was trying to re- unlock or remove a roof rack and my hand slipped and I ended up smashing the side of my wrist on top of the roof rack you know and sure it hurt but I brushed it off because a lot of times in martial arts training in the past years you know I've gotten beaten up bones smashed and stuff and then just kind of like "Ah, that's interesting and then just ignored it and carried on so same with this I smashed my wrist and I was like oh that really really hurt moved on you know and then I don't know why there was a delay I, I suspect that with with not eating right you know I'm allowing my body to get that sort of inflammation that I've been able to keep away for a long time and feel better so now I'm not feeling better you know there's inflammation and things that hurt are really gonna hurt no wonder why I'm feeling old you know another another is I sound worse than I usually do I ordinarily sound like junk I probably sound worse more junkier than ever I'm dealing with allergies around my face my nasal and all that stuff so Ay ay ay. Goodness gracious. Yeah, so trying to get right. Uh so we'll see. We'll see. I'll keep you guys updated. I'll go through uh go through these next uh this next week to see if things get any better. Um Yeah, that's all I got. Uh Thanks guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. And uh Yeah, so don't be like me. Be better than me. And keep me updated. (laughs) Catch me. I'll catch you. Now go out, eat something delicious, hug your family, and go run something. Bye. Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast.